Being a Zenyatta main is really not an easy thing. It feels like half the roster of heroes can take you out just by looking at you the wrong way. And in a day and age where new characters are given more tools, more mobility, and more agency, Zenyatta stands to remind us just how far the mighty have fallen. As such, I don't actually get to play him as much as I would like to, despite him not only being one of my most played heroes, but also arguably my absolute best pick. By which I mean it's the one character in this game that I'm not consistently awful at. But every so often, I I find myself in a game where I just say, you know what, screw it, I'm playing Zenyatta today. And that's exactly what this story is about. But I'm getting ahead of myself. On our last episode, we decided to assist our fellow robot brothers and sisters in their noble pursuit of lowering Genji's win rate. Because as we all know, the best way to get the developers to buff a hero is by tanking their statistics. With our good deed of the year done and wrapped up, it is time to return to familiar territory and show the world just how terrifying Zenyatta really can be. And don't be mistaken, my friends, I might look like a simple digital generate on the outside, but what lurks inside are the instincts of a killing machine. Don't believe me? Well, take a look at some of the reviews of my satisfied customers. Boosted YouTuber boosting a boosted YouTuber. Turns out Atterius Gaming is a pretty sick Zen player though. You overwatch. We went 8-1 and, and no joke, Atterius Gaming is probably the best Zen I've seen from the YouTube community. Nathan. Now, iPhone tweets aside, those who live in glass houses, I know what you're about to say, but Cliff, those reviews were from 2018 and you don't even play competitive anymore. And upon further inspection, we'd all come to realize that you certainly raise a good point. In none of my videos do I ever make the impression to be particularly competent to any capacity, so showing you tweets from 2018 hailing me as a decent player might not be enough to convince you. So let's make a deal. If by the end of this video I can convince you that I put my money where my mouth is, you are going to subscribe to my channel. And if I don't, well, I guess you could leave a comment telling me how terrible I am. But anyway, our story today takes place on Volskaya Industries. One of the more important parts of any round of Overwatch, especially when you have to play the 2 CP game mode, is making sure that you let your aggression out before the round begins. And Jeff knows that. That's why he gave us all this lovely decor we can destroy while we are waiting for the countdown. Having eased my mind, I was ready to jump into this fun round of Overwatch and begin heading out. Okay, never mind, there's a Moira ult. Let me just get back real quick. All right, cool. As I joined my comrades no more than 10 seconds into the match, I already found my main tank to be critically low in HP. What a fantastic way to start off this match. But because Sigma has been given like three characters worth of abilities, he miraculously survived the onslaught and I've spotted the prime target to be the recipient off my balls. The Discord orb comes naturally followed up by a headshot, forcing Mei to immediately retreat into her ice block. While she was waiting for what she must have known was certain doom, my Genji used the opportunity to make a point for why he really does need to be buffed. Her desperate attempts for survival have proven futile in the face of judgment itself and as such, she has been swiftly disposed of. While the Rotok tried to play peekaboo with me, Zup Zap on Sigma figured that Rock Paper Scissors was a more intellectually challenging game and as it turns out, Rock beats Pig. The reason that we could now confidently walk towards the objective was because mere moments earlier, our Hammond player, whose name I refuse to say out loud, pulled out his favorite party trick and forced the enemy team to contest him on the objective. We steadily continued to push forward, leaving less and less space for the enemies to maneuver until they eventually found themselves stuck in a corner. Zap Zap and I were working like a well-oiled machine, complementing each other's gameplay through swift usage of Discord orbs and rocks, until finally the enemy tracer found me. It is now that I'm going to demonstrate to you the power of terrible game design. Because as you can see, in Zenyatta we have a character with zero defensive capabilities, zero mobility, and zero means of defending himself effectively without the help of his team. And all of that would be fine and dandy considering the increased damage output he was given. However, Jeff Kaplan and the Overwatch development team, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that a character featuring no mobility and no defensive capabilities also needed one thing. A a massive hitbox. Marvel in awe and disgust as his tracer melts away my HP through the power of shooting my knees to then be rewarded with, that's right, headshots. Resentment towards broken hitboxes that haven't been fixed in four years aside, my Mercy decided to not only put herself in danger, but actually sacrifice her life in order for me to walk this earth once more. Having witnessed such noble sacrifice, I made sure to use that second chance well, and while my floating robot body can't literally walk this earth, I made sure to acquaint Mercy's killer with the sole of my shoe anyway. Well, I guess it's time to carry these kids. <laughs> 
As satisfying as this cleanup was, my resident hamster was not happy about me neglecting my healing responsibilities. God, sometimes I forget that Zenyatta is unironically part of the support category. Now obviously, we didn't immediately win this match following our next push, because if we did, this would make for a very short stories episode. But know that our hamster was very good at finding sneaky ways onto the objective, giving us a tick for free because their Moira was too busy making our Genji feel like he was impotent. If you ever question why Genji players cry about Moira on the forums, this is why. Truth be told, half our team was fully prepared to just retreat at this point after having battled in the choke for what felt like way too long. But seeing as how we have actually gotten a tick, we decided to give it a shot after all. Considering that I was the only player on my team actually doing damage, I knew that my mercy would be delegated to my healing responsibilities, meaning that keeping her alive was imperative to our chances for success. I offhandedly took out Mei once again, and while it's fun taking pot shots at Hammond, I knew that he'd be far gone before I could do any serious damage to him. So I focused ahead once more and decided to dish out some more punishment. Finally not being the center of attention, my Genji pulled out his Dragon Blade to further expand on our advantage while I tactically repositioned myself to first take out the enemy Moira, and then, only moments later, followed up with a satisfying double headshot on their Doomfist. As much as I wanted to hold my position, we needed bodies on the point to increase the spawn timer for the enemies, and considering that I'm yet to see my Hanzo on the kill feed, I knew that I had to be the one getting the deciding eliminations on the objective. But the enemy Tracer would not let me frag in peace, only barely missing her blink melee combo, but pressuring me enough to get me off the point. But we weren't out just yet. To deal with the enemy minefield, I decided to use my transcendence to buy us some more real estate on the point, while also cleverly relocating myself on the high ground. This position would make it more difficult for that Tracer to reach me, and I could take out their Moira with very little effort. While getting pushed off the high ground was not part of my master plan, this wouldn't stop me from continuously dishing out damage, tossing healing orbs, and making sure the enemies knew the true meaning of pain. But all this fun would eventually come to an end when, surprise surprise, another hero that kills Zenyatta for free rolled out a spawn. This character is the reason I need therapy. As much as I appreciated being the recipient of another resurrection, this team fight was long lost and all we did was bleeding time off our clock without getting another proper attempt. And seeing Doomfist fly past me definitely hammered home that I should be taking my leave. Observing the enemy Hammond roll towards me, many a Zenyatta player would start shaking in their sandals, but not me. Because yes, usually the slam combo makes for a free kill on the no mobility robot, but because of the simplistic way that he was engaging me, I could just sidestep away and punish him for his mistake. And what I felt really good about that outplay, it wouldn't take long for my Hanzo, whom I am still yet to see on the kill feed, to go for the absolute god play of leaping his useless existence into me, causing both of us to blow up thanks to Tracer's post bomb. And to make matters worse, my Mercy decided to resurrect him over me. If you didn't previously think that this fight was lost, then this play would certainly be the nail in that coffin. Mercy paid dearly for resing the wrong target, ending up on a similar spawn timer as me, and as we made our way back to the front line, we encountered a few enemy players pushing towards our spawn. And as much as I would have loved to pursue the giant hamster mech, there were more urgent matters to attend to, so I marked the enemy trace with my Discord orb, following her every move. With her HP being critically low, there was only one place she could conceivably want to go to. That meant that I could be the one slipping up the south pack as the auto ball returned, and realized that he couldn't take me out fast enough. Well, I guess you always meet twice in life, because while there was a worthy attempt of an attack to be made, if you try to combat hyper mobility with no mobility, it's usually the latter that is going to lose. My Mercy realized that it was her fault for not pocketing the obvious carry of the team, and it probably dawned on her that using resurrection on her hands though did not make for a great return on investment either. She once again sacrificed herself to bring me back to the land of the living, and I had no choice but to go in. Keeping a close eye on the tracer made me tunnel vision my way backwards into their sigma, which meant that I was forced to use my transcendence in order to survive. At least this time I could actually save one of my teammates by using it, and watching the enemy break walk backwards into a minefield was certainly a nice bonus. But you know the name of the game. If we are using all these ultimates, then that means that the enemy team can do the same, and we ended up losing that fight. This is the sobering moment in every Zenyatta player's game, where we have to submit to the fact that DLC characters have ruined our ability to play our favorite hero. But hey, if they can take me out for free when I play Zen, I guess it's only fair for me to do the same thing to them by also playing a DLC hero. And as far as my legendary gameplay goes, well, this is pretty much it. And I want to make sure that you see this entire process, because that really is the way it usually goes in most of my matches of Overwatch. Zenyatta is great, and he is definitely great fun, but when so many characters in the game can just dunk on you with you being able to do nothing but blow your ultimate, it certainly ends up being quite frustrating. More than giving him a buff, I simply wish that Blizzard would finally fix his overblown hitbox, because it just doesn't seem right for so many characters to be able to take him out with zero effort. Especially when you put in so much effort to position yourself properly and get value for your team. I reckon nobody cares about watching me play Moira, and yes, we did most certainly lose this game, but once 
Saving Grace was the enemy May slash Doomfist player complimenting me on my gameplay after the match. And I guess getting player of the game was also nice, but you know, a loss is a loss at the end of the day. So what about it? Could I convince you? Was I doing all I could to win earning your subscription to my channel? Or could I have done more to carry my team? Well, I guess I'll be hearing from you guys in the comments. And as such, this is it for our story here today. I tried my best on my strongest pick, but it wasn't enough to win the match. The end. Hey, thanks for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, consider ringing the bell if you want to see more, and yeah, hope you all have a fantastic day. Until next time, peace.